will do. Nothing else will do. Nothing else will do. Oh, come on, somebody wave in this room. Come on, somebody wave in this room. Come on, somebody wave in this room. Come on, I'm giving you a minute to, to raise your level of expectation. I'm giving you just a second to raise up your expectation. Come on, raise up your expectation. Come on, get your mind on Jesus. Get your mind on Jesus. Get your mind on the breaker. Get your mind on the healer. Get your mind on the deliverer. We shall fill us, fill us, fill us. Pour out your spirit upon us. Pour out your healing upon us. Pour out your love on us. Pour it out. Hey, hey, come on, raise up your level of expectation. Come on, raise it up. Raise it up. Come on, raise it up. Come on, we didn't come just because it's Sunday. We didn't come just because it was Sunday. Hallelujah. Did anybody come seeking after God? Did anybody come looking for Jesus? Did anybody come expecting the glory to invade your space? I came seeking him. I came looking for him. I need you today. I need you today. I need you today, Jesus. Oh, 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 Jesus. Cast me not away from your presence. Cast me not away from your presence. Cast me not away from your presence. I want you. I want you. I want you. I want you.
room to give you the change that you need to give you the awakening that you need to give you the stirring that you need you gotta jump in the river you gotta jump in the river somebody said what do you mean when you say jump in the river I need you to forget about everything that could keep you from going all in. I need you to forget about everything that will cause you to stay where you are. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. What they say, forget about it. Your money, forget about it. The bills, forget about it. Jump in the river. Because what you got to lose? What do you have to lose today? Jump in the river. Hey. Jump in the river. Come on, I want to encourage you. That's the word of the Lord for you today. Jump in the river. Jump in the river. You get your mind back. When you jump in the river, you get your peace renewed. When you jump in the river, your joy will be restored. When you jump in the river, your... Jump in the river. Woo, come on, say. Jump in the river. 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 Oh, I'm going out 
after Jesus. I'm going after Jesus. I'm going after Jesus. I'm going after Jesus. I'm going after Jesus. Somebody let out a shout in this room. say I came to bless him glory to God the time is coming now he is well you gotta go after Jesus I'm talking about go after him for real for real ain't worry about hallelujah what they got to say I ain't worry about hallelujah my makeup coming off I gotta go after Jesus come on somebody clap your hands right here I feel a liberty in this room I feel a freedom here
open up your mouth. God, we love you today. Come on, that's it, that's it. Come on, that's it, no other name. Hallelujah, do we honor today. No other name do we lift up in this moment. This is yours. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Father. We lift you up. We lift you up. Hallelujah. The Bible says that at your name, Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that you are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. Hallelujah. Then it turned around and said, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. No other name whereby men may be saved, but at the name of Jesus. We lift up that name today. That name, that name, that name, that name, that name, that name, that name. That name, that name, that name, that name, that name. It's in that name. It's in that name. My help is in that name. Oh, oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 oh, God. Something happens when I call you, say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, that's it. I hear you, family, say it. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Oh, come on. Something happens. Today, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, yeah, Jesus. something happens, something happens. Something happens. Come on, that's it. Sing it, sing it. Come on, say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Come on, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Jesus, Jesus. 
Just lift those hands, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to open up your mouth. We're not going to depend on the praise team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on right there. Open up your mouth and just begin to call on the only name that has power. And that is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus, he is Lord. Come on, open up your mouth. Hallelujah. And just begin to call on that great name. Hallelujah. I don't know about y'all, but I need him like never before. More than the water I drink, I need him. More than the food I eat, I need him. More than the air I breathe, I need him. Come on, somebody, call on him. 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 Come on, call on the name of Jesus. There is breakthrough in that name, Jesus. There is healing in that name, Jesus. There is restoration in that name, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Something happens when we call on that name. Hallelujah. Come on, just begin to call on the name of Jesus. Come on, continue to call everything that we need. Some of y'all like me, you've tried some other things, but it's in Jesus. Some of y'all like me, you strayed a different way, but you had to come right back to Jesus. Come on, somebody call on him. Call on him like you need him. I need you, God. I need you. Hallelujah, I've shared with you all before that I can remember a time I was about to lose my mind. But it was me calling on the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That I wasn't locked up. It's because of the name of Jesus that I was not in a padded cell. It's because of the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. That he let me keep my mind. I need you to call on him because I feel the power of Jesus in here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands. Father, we thank you. Father, we love you. God, we thank you that there is power in your name. We thank you, Lord God, that we can, we know our names and we know people who have names of power, but the only name that has healing in it is the name of Jesus. The only name that has breakthrough connected to it is the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. The only name that has deliverance connected to it is the name of Jesus. And we thank you for that name today. Hallelujah. We thank you for the name today. We thank you for that name today. We thank you and we love you, Father. Hallelujah. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray. And it is so. Come on, somebody release a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, like you know that name. Come on, a shout of praise. Hallelujah. I feel victory in here today. I feel victory. Hallelujah. I feel a supernatural breakthrough but every praiser in this building there is a supernatural earthquake that's about to shake your life if you believe it come on and give God a shout right there I feel breakthrough I feel breakthrough I feel breakthrough 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 what you've been praying for you in the right place at the right time your breakthrough is here. I feel breakthrough. He is Val 
Brazil. He's the Lord of the breakthrough, and I decree breakthrough. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to run across the aisle, and I want you to high-five about five people and decree breakthrough. Come on, get up, get up. Hallelujah. We ought to be standing during praise and worship anyway. Hallelujah. Come on, say breakthrough. 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 Come on, high five them. Breakthrough. Breakthrough. I don't know what you've been praying about, but I came with some real good news for you today. Today is a day of breakthrough. Today is a day of breakthrough. Today is a day of breakthrough. I don't know what you've been believing God for, but I got a memo from heaven, a download from heaven, an email from heaven to let you know that today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your day. You've been celebrating everybody else with your unselfish self. But today <laughs> is your day. Somebody shout, it's my day. It's my day. It's my day today. I'm going to get everything I came for. I'm going to get everything, everything, everything. I'm about to get it all. All. Your healing, all. Your deliverance, all. Your encouragement, all. Your strength, all. Your joy, all. Your peace, all. That was all right. That was all right. That was all right. But I want you to give God praise like it's already done because it is. Give God a shout. Give God a holler. Give God a dance. Give God a clap. Give God a holler today. It's already done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody say, today is my day. Today is my day. Today is my day. My day of breakthrough. And I am open to receive. If that's you, come on, give God another praise. That's it. That's it. That's it. You might as well praise him like it's already done because it is. You might as well go ahead and shout like you're crazy because it's already done. You don't have to wait until the battle is over. You can shout right now. Shout right now. Shout right now. Shout right now. Breakthrough is here. Breakthrough is here. Breakthrough is here. Breakthrough is here. You're in the right place. Hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands and shout breakthrough. That's right. That's right. It's in here. It's in here. It's in here. Whole bunch of praises in here today. It's in here. Whole bunch of real worship.
worship was in here today, it's in here. It's in here. It's in here. It's in here. Yo, break to run, mother run. Run. Oh, we going somewhere today. Every tired spirit be broken off of you now. Every stagnant spirit be broken off of you now. Progression, progression, acceleration. Move forward, move forward, move forward. You in the right place, serving the right God. Because this is a right now miracle about to happen for you today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Run, uh, Deacon Elect. Run, run. Hallelujah. 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 Now, if you believe that, come on, release a shout of praise. If you believe today is your day, if you believe breakthrough is yours, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise, give him praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, it is so. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it is so. You're just coming into agreement. It's the power of partnership. Say, it is so. It is so. It is so. We're getting ready to go somewhere. It is so. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Can we take just a moment and release a specific praise to the specific God that we serve? Come on and do it. Hallelujah. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We honor God above everything and above everyone. Hallelujah. He is the one that we serve. He is the one that we praise. He is the only one that we worship. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. If you all would do me a favor, I want you to give God praise for you with your power for self. I feel like you can do just a little bit better than that for you. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for you. Hallelujah. You sacrificed and you could have been a lot of places today, but you're in the Lord's house. And we want to take just a moment and welcome you to DP Nation Pedal. Hallelujah. That's it. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the place of power. Breakthrough happens here. Miracles happen here. Amen. And we just thank God so much that there is a fresh word that is always released through this house. Would y'all help me to give God praise? Hallelujah. For our founders, our overseers, we thank God. We're not just in authority, we're under authority as well. Chief Apostle Paul Beard, elect lady Dr. Donna Beard. Hallelujah. Help me give God praise for mom and dad Beard. Amen. Amen. We thank God so much for the best assistant pastors on the planet. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise for Pastor and Prophet John Trail Hill, Lady Quinetria Hill. Hallelujah. Help me give God praise for what I consider to be the best looking pastor. Hallelujah. With his powerful self, with his anointed self. Hallelujah. An authentic apostle and a shown up genuine prophet. Come on, lift up a praise for our gift, Apostle Cordero D. Beard. Hallelujah. Thank God so much for him. Listen to all of our visitors. We just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. All we ask is please do not allow this to be your last time. We are here every Sunday at 2 p.m. Y'all shout come through. Sunday's at 2. And it's always crazy like this. I didn't say crazy. It's always crazy because we are a crazy church that is full of power. So thank you for being here, visitors. We love you and we thank God for you. If you all would, turn your attention to the screen for our announcement. 
Greetings, hello everyone. Welcome to DP Nation Pedal. I am Lady Jessica Beard, and on behalf of Apostle Cordero Beard and myself, we want to say that we are so excited that you are here today. We hope that you're ready because something powerful is about to happen for you. And whatever happens for you today, we pray that it overflows to everything that is connected to you. All we ask is please do not allow this to be your last time. You're wanted here, you're welcomed here. And all we want you to do is come through Sundays at two. because we are what we are winning on what y'all? Absolutely, we're winning on Wednesdays. We're so excited about the community and the fellowship and the things that are happening here on Wednesdays. It has been a blessing to sit back and watch that weekly uh, encounter grow. It is such a blessing. Family, we're only here twice a week, so I want you to carve that time out on Wednesdays to be here on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and then of course on Sundays at 2 p.m. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. And that's right. We are so excited, everyone. We are hosting, the Women of Power are hosting a Mother's Day brunch on next Sunday, May 12th at 11.30 a.m. Get your tickets, y'all shout ASAP. Come on, saints of God, I need y'all to go ahead and get your tickets, okay? We've opened it up to the women of the house first. Um, it's gonna be really good. The men of power will be serving the women on next Sunday. Hello? Okay, that's pretty awesome. All by itself, we have a photo shoot station, so we'll be taking pictures as well. Um, ladies, come. If you're a mom, celebrate you. If your mom's not here, come in honor of your mother and celebrate her. Invite your auntie, your cousins, your friends, whatever. It does not matter. We want you to get your tickets. They're only $20. We have giveaways. We have door prizes. It's going to be lots and lots of fun and a, whole, and a really good, delicious meal as well. So make sure that you get your tickets as soon as possible. For those who have registered, thank you so, so much. And for those that reg have registered and those that will register by tomorrow, which is Monday at 5 p.m., you will go into a drawing for a spa massage. And we will be giving it away at the, uh, uh, at the brunch, okay? All right, so men of God, y'all get with Pastor Hill and get lined up because we're going to have our feet propped up, praise the Lord, in honor of Mother's Day, and we're going to let y'all serve us, and we're going to say thank you, okay? So please get registered for that, okay? Make that a priority today, women of God. Go ahead and register for our brunch, all right? Also, I want to give a very special thank you on behalf of myself, even and on behalf of my husband as well, for all of the birthday love that was shown toward us. Thank you. Our birthdays are always exactly two weeks apart. So his birthday, then two weeks later, mine. And when I said we felt the love, we felt the embrace from the people that God has called us to lead. And we do not take that for granted. We just want to say thank you for loving us. Thank you for supporting us. And thank you for celebrating us. Now I need y'all to do it real big for all of the May babies that are in the building. Come on, that's my month. Hallelujah. We want to say happy birthday and to all of the anniversaries that are in the month of May. We want to say happy anniversary to you as well. Amen. Amen. Also, we want to give a great big congratulations. Y'all help us do it real big right here. For all of those that are graduating and receiving special promotions. We want to pause and celebrate your academic success. Congratulations to you. Amen. For all of your hard work and the sacrifices. We believe in education over here. Amen. We want you to get as many degrees as you can. If you want to go back to school, go back to school. But we thank God so very much for those that are graduating. We do have a special uh, uh, a time of celebration that is coming. We will give you more information about that. But there is a celebration for the graduates that will take place. Also, everybody, we're super excited. Y'all know during the month of June, it's a big month over here because it is Founders Week, and we are excited 
this is a time that we've set aside um, every year. We set this time aside to celebrate the chief apostle and elect lady for their decades upon decades of sacrifice for the kingdom work and honor them for who they are, not just to us, but for who they are to the kingdom at large. We want large, so we want you to save those dates, June the 13th through June 16th. Amen. We're asking all of our disciples to help us, help us celebrate our founders with a $100 seed. Super low, super easy for all the work they have done. They are good ground. So we want every single person to prepare yourselves. It's really too small, truth be told, but we want to sow a $100 seed into our founders. Amen. Amen. And then one more announcement. The Man Cave is this coming Thursday. Okay, men. Okay, I see you. I see you. Yeah, on this coming Thursday, the men will be in what they call the Man Cave. I don't know what they be talking about, but they won't let us in. So, yeah, we're going to let y'all have your little moment. But anyway, the Man Cave is this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. It is a virtual meetup. So, men of God, get yourself in the group me, okay? We have a private group me for just the men that are connected to this house. We want you to be in there. Apparently they be having man talk and all of that type of stuff. So see Pastor Hill so that you can get the link and be in there and make sure that you're on this coming Thursday at 7 p.m. in the man cave. Amen? Amen. I need y'all to do me a favor. All the kingdom millionaires make some noise. I know that's right. Hallelujah. This is our time of giving. We are a giving church. We are faithful with our time. Somebody say amen. Amen. We are, are faithful with our sacrificial seed. Somebody say amen. Amen. We love and celebrate giving opportunities. We want you to prepare yourselves. Everybody in the house, hear me. A part of worship is giving. A part of your worship a part of coming in here and, and, and worshiping the Lord. Of course, we lift our hands and all of that we're supposed to, but a part of your worship is taking a portion of your treasure and placing it at the feet of the king. So when you place it in this bucket, we want you to, to visualize it, that you're placing your treasure and everything that is connected to you, your resources, that you're placing it at the feet of Jesus and allowing him to breathe on everything that is connected. So everybody get a seed in your hand. If you're sowing electronically, the giving methods are there on the screen. Amen. If you have a check, if you have a card, uh, uh, Sister Millie is right here if you want to do a credit card or a debit card. But we want to encourage everybody, when there's a giving opportunity, get something in your hand. Come to this bucket and sow it into the kingdom system. Amen? Amen. Y'all jump to your feet cheerfully. Come on. Everybody should be moving. Everybody should be moving. If you are electronic giver, come as well and just touch the bucket and say increase. Increase. This is a part of our worship. Hallelujah. your hand toward your seed. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. We make the decree and the declaration 
that this is a 100% tithing church. Father, tithing is your principle. It is your idea. So we obey you in it. Father, we tell you thank you for those that sow into the kingdom system that they're out of debt. All of their needs are met and that they have plenty more to put in store. We thank you that pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto their bosom. We tell you, thank you, Lord God, that this is the brokest that they will ever be. Father, after today, we decree increase, abundance, and overflow because they have activated the kingdom principles of giving in their lives. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. It is so. Come on, celebrate your seed for just a moment. Come on and do it. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. That's right. Celebrate your seed because it's going to go. It's going to grow. It's going to multiply in Jesus' name. It is so. Amen. Amen. If y'all would do me a favor, stand to your feet. We're getting ready to receive from heaven. We are getting ready. Hallelujah. To, to pull our chair up to the metaphorical table and eat this spiritual food that God has for us on today. We thank God for a real man of God. We thank God for an anointed man of God. Come on, I need y'all to give God praise, hallelujah, as we get ready to receive from Apostle Cordero D. Beard. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, all over this building. Amen. Come on, lift your hands. Let's worship the Father. Lord, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your mercy, and your outstretched hand. God, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to worship on one accord. Lord, we thank you that the miracle is present today because of the Messiah. God, we praise you and we honor you. You are the true and living God. God, we worship you because beside you there is no other. God, we thank you for being the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning, the end, the first, and the last, Lord God. We bless you for being he that is, he that was, and he that is to come. All that we are, all that we are not, God, we give it unto you. I believe it was the great apostle Paul that says, I am no more or no less. Simply by the grace of God, we thank God for the grace that he bestowed even upon us to live in the precious law of liberty. God, we thank you even in this house, this moment, this space, this aptitude, Lord God, you said Oh, uh, well, there'll be two or three that's gathered together that you'll be in the midst of us, God, and we thank you that you are here. God, we also pray, Lord God, and thank you in advance for what you shall do. I wish I had somebody in this place that would praise God because it's already done. Come on, you can do better than that. Is that your already done praise? Is that your thank you for delivering me praise? Is that your thank you for bringing me out praise? I need a thousand of you all just to open your mouth and lift your voice and praise God that it could be worse. Thank God. Come on, somebody, that you have been provided the opportunity to know him. Come on, I wish I had somebody that would just take a moment and open your mouth and let the glory come out. Come on, out of your belly, out. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Come on, we live, we exist to give his name the praise, to give his to give his name the honor. We lift you, Lord God, and you said it, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Come on, somebody. Is anybody happy, glad that you're saved today? Well, come on, put your hands on it. I really, I really feel a miracle here. I believe that there's an opportunity that's present before us. I want everybody that can and will to have a spirit of reception. I believe that God's going to meet you today beyond the point of your need. Look at somebody, whisper to them and say, neighbor, oh neighbor. Y'all sound like Presbyterians. Come on, talk like you got the Holy Ghost and say, neighbor, oh neighbor. I am here today with the expectancy 
that God's going to do what only he can. Amen. Come on, somebody to thank God for the power of an almighty God. Amen. The same day, same night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he broke it. He said, this bread is symbolic to my body. After the same manner, he took the cup. Amen. And the cup was that of his blood. It was the wine and symbolic to his blood. As often as you drink of this cup, eat of this bread, you do show for my death until I come. Amen. This is, amen, if you would come just a little bit closer, thank you. Amen. This is, amen, the holy sacrament. Amen. One of the things that we do in remembrance of Jesus Christ and say thank you for what he's done for us. I believe the songwriter said, what can wash away our sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make us whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. We thank God for his body that was broken unto us and we receive healing in the name of Jesus. Amen. Asking all of you on that are participating in this sacred ceremony. Amen. If you're on my this side, my right, your left, asking you to line up behind, amen, Pastor Jessica Beer, amen, Pastor Hill, Lady Hill. If you're on this side, I'm asking you to line up behind Dad Beard, Mother Beard, amen, and so on and so forth. I want you to move expeditiously, amen. We are grateful, amen, for what Jesus done for us, amen. And while you're coming, amen, I'm going to pray, God, we thank you even now. Lord God, that you pay the debt that you did not owe because we owe the debt that we could not pay. God, we thank you that on the cross of Calvary, Lord God, you paid it all for us, Lord. We thank you even now, Lord God, that while we're consuming your body and your blood, that we're being transformed by the renewing of our very mind. God, we thank you. It is blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Come at random. Amen. Let us take partake in it. Amen. Asking you whenever you get your supplement to return back to your seat. We're going to take it all together. particular time we're asking you to peel back the top layer that represents the body of Jesus Christ. Asking you to lift it in your right hand, Lord God, we thank you that this body that was broken for us is blessed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Take, ye eat all of it. Amen. In his name. the same manner. Asking you to peel back the second layer. We thank God for the New Testament. Amen. Blood of Jesus Christ. Take drink ye all of it in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Amen. We thank God. Amen. On today. Amen. For the Holy Sacrament. Amen. Amen. In what Jesus did. Amen. 
over 2,000 years ago on the rugged cross. Amen. On Calvary's hill, hung, bled, and died so that you and I could have a right to the tree of life. Ever thankful and forever grateful. Amen. For what he did. Amen. On behalf of you and I. Amen. 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 If you can, Actually, you come on to put your hands together all over this building. Amen. We're so thankful. Amen. Just to be in his house. Amen. We also appreciate God. Amen. For the founders of this wonderful work. Amen. Come on. Let's give God praise, glory, and honor. Amen. For none other than the chief apostle. Amen. Apostle Paul and Hail the Beard. Amen. We thank God that we are a part, amen, of his global assignment. Amen. We thank God for the lovely elect lady, Dr. Donna Beard. Come on. We praise God for the mother, amen, of many nations. Amen. We're thankful for their sacrifice and their commitment, amen, to us and the body of Christ. Amen. With that being said, we also thank God for mom and dad Beard. God bless each and every one of you. Amen. Thank God for them. Amen. What about the hills? Can you put your hands together? Amen. For Pastor Gentrell Hill, Lady Quinetria Hill, the whole Hill gang. They're in this building. Amen. Come on, put your hands together for yourself. You made it in this house. Amen. Last but not least, I thank God. Amen. For the lovely lady. Y'all put your hands together. Amen. For Pastor Jessica Beard. Amen. Who celebrated another year around the S O N. Amen. Come on, can we do it for the birthday lady? Amen. We are yet in celebration. Amen. And we're thankful, amen, for her life, her commitment. Amen. And what she means, amen, to this church. Amen. We really do love and appreciate her. Amen. Mother's Day is coming up. Amen. We're gonna celebrate all the mothers and all the ladies. Amen. That I uh, know what it's like to give birth to a real child. Amen. And give the child to God. So, even if you haven't gotten your tickets, go ahead on and get your tickets. Amen. The men of God are waiting. Amen. To serve you. How many people coming? How many coming? How many coming? Amen. I'm coming too. I'm going to be there too. Amen. I'm going to be serving as well. Jesus said, Let the greatest among you. Amen. Be a servant. And that's who I am. And I don't mind. Thank God for these maestros, amen. Also, amen, praise and worship team, Minister Keisha Brown Cooley, amen. Everybody, the media team, every nurse, every handmaid, and every adjutant, amen. We thank God, amen, for your service and your sacrifice. If you have your Bible, do me a favor, get your Bible, lift it above your head, and repeat after me and say, everything is going down. But the word of God, amen, one more time, everything is going down, but the word of God, amen. We have an understanding that the grass fades and the flower do wither, but the word of God shall abide. Somebody help me say forever, amen. God bless you to the book of John. Let's look at John's gospel, chapter number six. Amen. I really believe that that is a word from the Lord that's in this place. Amen. Prayerfully, we don't come out of tradition. Prayerfully, we didn't come today just because it's Sunday. Prayerfully, we didn't come just to get out the house. But prayerfully, there's a people among us that's hungry for change. That's hungry for the word. Told somebody a few weeks ago that God ain't obligated to feed everybody. Amen. The Bible said, they, they who hunger and thirst after righteousness, that these are the ones that's going to be full and filled. Amen. I looked around in scripture and I looked at all of those that were a candidate of a miracle. And each and every one of them had something called a desperation. Might afraid that we're living in a time, day, hour, dispensation where people will come just to come without the expectancy even for Jesus to show up. But I want to let you know that if the Holy Ghost don't come in here, all of our coming is in vain. I didn't come for nothing. I came for something. And I decree and declare that I'm not going to leave until I get it. 
Amen. Look at somebody and say, I didn't come just for the miracle. Amen. I came for the Messiah. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I believe, amen, that I'll be made whole. John chapter number six, amen, starting at the 22nd verse. The Bible says the day following when the people which stood on the other side of the sea saw that there was none other boat there. Save that one wherein his disciples were entered, and that Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but that his disciples were gone away alone. They begin to question and say, How be it there came other boats from Tiberias, nigh unto the place where they did eat bread, right? After that, the Lord had given thanks. Bible said 24, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping. They got in the boat. They were looking for Jesus. They woke up, Brother Delvin, amen, the next day, and they went looking for Jesus, and they could not find uh, the man. So what did they do? They looked around and hitched the boat and said within themselves, we're going to find, we're going to seek and find him. Here, Earl, I want to ask a question that I've asked before, amen, and I'm going to ask this question early. Is there anybody, amen, that's yet looking for Jesus? Yeah, a lot of us come on somebody we're looking for oh I might preach here after a while but a lot of people are looking they're partnering with people uh, because they're looking to obtain a better credit score a lot of people are looking for more money now than what they have now a lot of people are looking for a house even in these climate and conditions and times that we're looking in a lot of people is looking for a boo a girlfriend a boyfriend a husband or a wife amen but how many people good God almighty has it in your mind that come on somebody uh, despite all of the lookers and despite the object of their affection God I want to be one of the ones uh, that's still looking for you come on high five your neighbor if you don't mind if you ain't too stuck up if you ain't too mean nasty or high sedity come on pat somebody on the shoulder that's sitting in proximity of you and ask them a question oh my God be nosy just for a little while and say neighbor my God beard you might do it are you looking for Jesus? Are you yet looking for him? The Bible said they woke up and they went to seeking after him. The Bible says that whenever they did, uh, uh, they went and they, the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples. Uh, they took a boat. These people were willing to leave their comfort zone to find him. So there was a boat there, and the Bible said that these people, uh, they, 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 they got in a boat to go looking after him. And there's a scripture that says, knock and the door shall be open, asking, you shall receive. Uh, it says, seek and you shall find, and their seeking calls them to find him. So the Bible says, uh, therefore they saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciple. They got a boat and came to a place called Capernaum. Seeking Jesus. The Bible says, Amber, and when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou here? Uh, you didn't let us know you was gone. When did you get over here? Uh, last night seemed like we all stayed and slept together, but we woke up in the morning time and you was already gone. They were seeking uh, after Jesus. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. We get meant to see Brown Cooley. What did they want from him? My God, would you stretch your hand toward the preacher and say, Preacher, if you don't mind, come on, preach to us. We need a word. My God. The Bible said they were seeking for Jesus. They found him on the other side of the sea and said, When did you get here? Jesus answered them almost with an attitude. How in the world you going to get an attitude with people that's looking for you? Uh, Jesus almost with an attitude looked at these individuals uh, and they said, uh, uh, Jesus said, Barely, barely, I say unto you, you looking for me? Are you seeking for me? He said, listen, I know you're looking for me, but you're not looking for me. Come on, somebody, to get a word. Oh, my goodness. I feel the Holy Ghost creeping in here. Good 
good to see you. Come on, somebody. He said, you're looking for me, and you're not even looking for me for because you saw the miracle. The Bible said, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. Can I catch you all up to where we are? Just a few scriptures beforehand. We understand that Jesus went about doing good to those that, that were dealing with sicknesses and dealing with disease. And the Bible declared that because of what he was able to do supernaturally that he gained the attention of a people that I want to passionately call the multitude. Don't you know that if you are gifted, come on somebody, the gift that you have, have the capabilities of making room for you and causing people that used to look over you to look at you now all because of a gift and the Bible uh, declared that these people, they saw him and began to follow him because they were there when they seen they were there and seen him come on somebody, spit on the ground make clay, rub it in a blind man's eye and he received their sin, his sight, so they began to follow him and the Bible said right here uh, just a few uh, scriptures before this uh, uh, they were following him and Jesus looked at the multitude that he gathered in ministry and he discovered that these people were hungry so the Bible said because they were hungry sister Nikki Harper Jesus began to get moved with compassion uh, and he fed them hungry people well is there a marketplace that we may be able to buy bread uh, they looked at Jesus and told him it ain't a Kroger's it ain't a Walmart it ain't a public. Y'all don't know about that. Huh? Come on, somebody. It ain't a whatever. Come on. It ain't a Win Dixon nowhere around here. All we got is 220 penny worth. 200 penny worth. Huh? And that's not enough huh, to feed all of these hungry people. Huh? All we got is 200 penny worth. Huh? And this young lad, and all he got is two fishes. All he got is two fish sticks huh? and a few loaves of bread. Huh? Jesus said, Give it unto me. What did Jesus do? He lifted up the bread. He lifted up the fish. Come on somebody. He blessed it and began to break it up. And the Bible said that Jesus right there on the spots fed. Come on somebody. 5,000 men not including the women and the children. Now if you turn the page, now it's the next day. And they're looking for Jesus. But can I tell you something? they looking for the right man but for all of the wrong reasons. Good God Almighty. I might preach. Come on somebody in a little while. Just sit down. I'll come get you out to while. They were looking for Jesus. Looking for Pastor Hill. The right man for all of the wrong reasons. And Jesus and his discernment knew that these people were looking for him. But they didn't really want what they had. They searched out to him. Oh, they had ate real good. They ate at the fish fry. They burped with the bed. Woke up the next morning and discovered that they hung and they want fish and chips yet another time. They didn't seek him that they should be saved, but they seek him for an occasion for their flesh. God, I want you to feed me one more time for free. Y'all ain't gonna help me. They weren't looking for him for the miracle. They weren't looking for him even for salvation. The reason why they got in the boat and went to Capernaum, come on somebody to find him is because their people have birthed and now they're hungry again. And they're only looking for Jesus so that he can bring them another free meal. I can tell y'all don't want good preaching. They were seeking for Jesus. Not because of who he was. But they were seeking after Jesus so they could eat in the buffet line for free. One more time. The Bible said Jesus looked at this and discerned. Even they had to tell him the whole thing. When they said, uh, when did you get here? Jesus already know that they were looking for him, but they didn't want, come on somebody, the miracle. They didn't want to be made whole. They didn't want salvation, but they wanted another free meal. Which brings me to the topic of the message. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder if you don't mind. I'm, I'm going to be done with you. You ain't even realize I'm about to be dumb. Somebody help me. By the grace of God and the help of the Holy Ghost, the YA is going to minister a message entitled, No More Free Meals. 
I ain't going to be up here long. No more free meals. That's all they wanted to eat for free one more time. That's all they wanted. They didn't want salvation. All they wanted was another free meal. Uh, but Jesus refused to do it. He said, this time, if you're going to eat, you're going to have to pay for it. No more free meals. I'm getting ready to get out of here. Jesus said, uh, 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 valley, valley, I said to you, you're not seeking me because you saw the miracle, but because you did eat the loaves and were filled. He, but he tried to give them wisdom and say, labor not for the meat, which ravishes. That's obvious. You ate it and digested it, and now you're hungry again. He says, labor not for the meat which perisheth, but uh, for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, uh, for him hath God the Father sealed. Jump down to the 47th verse. The Bible said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that he that believeth uh, on me have everlasting life. He says, I am the bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness, and now they are dead. Uh, but I want to let you know, yeah, all of the people that Moses fed, come on somebody, in the wilderness, they ate and eventually died. He said, but if you eat of this bread which I'm going to give you my God you going to know what it's like to live forever good God of mine I feel it creeping on me your fathers ate of the bread and now they're dead 50 says uh, this is the bread which cometh down from heaven uh, that if a man may eat thereof uh, they, they ain't going to be able to die Jesus says that I am the living bread which came down from heaven he said if any man eat it uh, of this bread he shall live how long come on somebody open up your mouth and shout forever the Bible says and the bread that I will give you is my flesh which I give for the life of the world I jump down to 53 the Bible said then Jesus said unto them verily verily I say unto you except you eat of my flesh except you eat of the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you for whosoever eateth of my flesh and drinketh of my blood have eaten eternal life. He says, and I will raise him up in the last day. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to let somebody know that in order for us to be able to get the life that Jesus has afforded unto us, we can't be hanging around him for his hand, but we've got to receive the works of his heart. Yeah. No more free meals. Uh, the Bible goes on to talk about, come on somebody, this saying that Jesus had talked to these boys about, these people about. He said, wait a minute. Huh? Ain't no more free meals. Huh? He said, if you're going to eat something now, you're going to have to eat of my body and you're going to have to drink of my blood. Huh? If you keep on reading in the scripture, the Bible said that these people came together. Come on, somebody, and said, huh? what is this man trying to say? Huh? But Jesus was speaking in a parable about the Last Supper. Huh? He was speaking to these people huh? about a parable about salvation salvation, right? That's what he came to give them. They wanted fish sticks, but he came, come on somebody, to lay his life down that they may have eternal life. But can I tell you something? He said, if you're going to get it now, guess what? It ain't coming to you for free. You're going to have to eat of my blood and drink of my blood. Can I tell you something? Guess what? They begin to murmur amongst one another and said, what kind of thing is this man asking us to do? He said, wait a minute, we ain't coming here to do all that. They came amongst themselves, even Jesus' disciples, and said, this is a hard saying. The Bible said because they didn't want to hear and do what Jesus was asking of them, that all of the multitude, they turned and left Jesus, and they walked off. Y'all don't want to preach it, but come on, this is just what the doctor ordered. Give me my 
two and a half more minutes uh, and I'm going to come get you. Do you understand? Uh, so the Bible said that the multitude, uh, they won't, they went off uh, and they left Jesus. Uh, come on somebody because uh, of a hard saying uh, that Jesus asked them to do. Uh, guess what happened? Uh, there were 12 disciples uh, that Jesus handpicked uh, for himself. Uh, they looked at him and agreed uh, that this is a hard saying as well. Uh, guess what Jesus did? Uh, he looked at them uh, and asked them a question. Uh, will you also go away? Uh, you know what the disciples said? Uh, they said, wait a minute, we ain't going nowhere. We must die. Uh, come on somebody when you healed. Uh, come on somebody. Uh, Peter's mother-in-law, we were there when, when you just fed the multitude uh, with two fish and five loaves of bread. They said, thou have the words uh, of eternal life. Uh, and if we leave, uh, where are we going? Uh, can I tell you what this message is about? Uh, you know what Jesus asked him to do? Uh, they said, wait a minute. Uh, you coming in here for another free meal. Uh, he said, but if you're going to follow me, uh, you're going to have to change. Uh, guess what they didn't want to do? Uh, they wanted to hang around Jesus, uh, but they did want to change. Uh, they wanted to hang around Jesus, uh, but they did want salvation. Uh, they wanted the favor of God, uh, but they did not want to submit uh, to what Je the, to the transformation uh, that Jesus was calling them to. They said, guess what? Uh, if you're going to follow me, uh, you're going to have to put up your alcohol lift. Uh, if you're going to follow me, uh, you're going to have to cleanse yourself. Uh, if you're going to follow me, uh, you're going to have to give up something. Uh, and guess what? Uh, they decided uh, that they wanted the fish. Uh, they wanted the favor, but they did want salvation. Uh, so they turned around uh, and all of them one by one began to walk away because all they wanted from Jesus was another free meal. When Jesus told them that you're going to have to be accountable, they didn't want accountability, so they walked off and they left. Sit on down. Sounds like the church we go to. I'm with you as long as you're prophesying houses and cars. But if you go to telling me that I, I can't shack no more, I got an issue with you preaching. If you tell me, if you tell me I can't have a wife and a concubine on the side, then guess what? You got a problem with me. But as long as I'm telling you good things, y'all ain't going to help me. As long as I, I'm prophesying and telling you, you're going to have more money than you can shake a stick at. you happy with the church. Huh? But the time accountability, come on, somebody, it's offered in the house of God. You know what people are saying now? Come on, I ain't signed up for that. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. But look at somebody and tell them, I won't more from Jesus than a free meal. I, I accept the finished work. Jesus is talking to these people about salvation. Guess what we found out? They didn't want it. They didn't want it. I'm coming. Maybe I'll preach this another time, another place. But they didn't want it. And when we talk about salvation, y'all sit down. Y'all make me nervous. Folks in the back can't see. I'm going to talk to you. I, I want to talk to you. I'm not trying to accomplish the, a Richter scale today. Uh, I'm not here to entertain you. <laughs> I, I want to I give you something because if we're not we're not careful. We'll turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. And I discovered that the church and the religion that we made, God had nothing to do with it. What we done tied together and called church and called salvation, you get me to find out, uh, we got a counterfeit. Can I tell you something about salvation? The reason why some people don't really want it is because it, because it costs you something. And guess what we want? Guess what these new age Christians want today? They want a salvation that's free, that don't cost nothing. We want a salvation that sounds good, that make us shout and dance, but don't make us want to change. That's what we want. 
And all over the world, folks are saying, well, you can't say this and you can't say that. Well, guess what we done mess around and did? We done mess around and left the scriptures. Uh, and we done created a religion that God didn't sanction. Come on, somebody. Can I tell you something? Even about your born, just because you were born a certain way, that's okay. Come on, somebody. We cool with that. But Jesus said, wait a minute, Nicodemus. Uh, if you're going to walk right, you got to be born another time. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. You got to be born again. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. And guess what? We want the kind of salvation that don't change us. We want to be saved, but stay the same. We want to come in here and do it how we think or how we feel like doing it. And not according to that which God have called us into. So that's what we done done. We done, we, we done, we done invented a hybrid, a hybrid church, a hybrid salvation. Come on, it ain't even authentic. Can I tell you about salvation? You don't want to hear it though. Can I tell you about salvation? You don't want to hear it. Can I tell you something about salvation? Salvation, come on, true salvation equals true transformation. And if you ain't transformed, if you ain't got transformation, you might don't have salvation. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here when you get saved for real. You don't have to say. We want the kind of salvation that'll let us still do what we did when we was in the world. So guess what we got now? We, we got a bunch of people. Huh? Come on, somebody in the household of God huh? that saying, Lord, Lord, huh? but may not enter huh? because the Bible said huh? in order to really be saved, huh? come on, somebody, you got to be transformed. Don't nobody want to change. Huh? If you preach this kind of gospel, folks will walk out of your church huh? and try to file a lawsuit against you. But this right here is the word of God and I want somebody that's going to bring me back to the foot of the cross I want somebody, come on somebody to bring me back in profit alignment with the do order so guess what we got now, we got the world that done mixed with the church and now we churching but we ain't changing, you know what you call that, now we got the church world, go to church on Sunday go to church on Wednesday go to church on Friday but still got a hole in the house wide in the same room and guess what we fine with it don't no more don't want nobody to say nothing but if you're gonna be saved you got to be changed you gotta be changed who rewrote the book which one of us changed the message? And if we change it, which one of us is qualified to do so? What have we created? The Bible said that if any man be in Christ, if any man receives salvation, if any man be in Christ, he's a, a, she is a new creature. What happened to the old thing? The old thing like, passed away. And behold, all things. We want a salvation that don't change my attitude. That don't change who or what I love. That don't change the places that I go. And if you talk about it now, we crucify you too. But that ain't the gospel. Can I tell you something? Jesus did hang, bleed, and die. Come down to a virgin Mary to bring you salvation just so you can live the way you was living before all of that happened. That don't make no sense. The Bible said we take on that type of mentality. That's what we do. We become guilty of crucifying him afresh. Sit on down. I'm coming. I may not get there, but hey. Let's, 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 let's look at this. Churches are packing out all over America because the preacher is giving away free meals. Kind of thing that don't make you change nothing. Kind of thing that don't make you do nothing. Comfortable inconvenience and don't even realize that you got a soul. 
that's got a destination that got to go somewhere one day. But your preacher now is scared to preach about certain things because we done come on somebody to join a hybrid church that ain't got no power for real. All we want is entertainment, uh, lights, camera, and action. Uh, but don't nobody come on somebody want to be held accountable to that which Jesus has said before us. What kind of church are we attending nowadays? What kind of salvation have we received? Can I tell you, can I just talk to you now about salvation? Salvation is not merely about being forgiven for sins, but also by being transformed into a new creation. We get saved and we receive automatically eternal life. But can I tell you something? This transformation, yeah, this transformation uh, involves a renewed mind, a changed heart, and a life that reflects the character of Christ. Y'all don't want this here today. Salvation encompasses more than just the promise of eternal life. It also involves transportation, transformation in the here and the now. What did he tell the woman that was caught in the very act of adultery? Did he scorn the woman? Did he kick her out of the church? He said, woman, come on somebody. I'm going to let you know uh, 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 that, that, that you don't have no condemners. I didn't come to condemn you. He said, guess what? When they brought this woman to Jesus, Jesus said, he that is without sin cast the first song. Everybody got their hat, their coat, and they left. They caught this woman in the very act of adultery. But guess what? Jesus was smart. He know adultery ain't a sin you can do with one person alone. It had to be another person. Come on, somebody. He was probably in there trying to see a blood bath too, trying to see what Jesus was going to do to this woman. Guess what he did? He gave this woman grace. But can I tell you something? He didn't give her grace without giving her the truth. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. He gave her grace. He said, woman, well, I die an accuser. She looked around and said, I have none. He said, neither do I accuse you, but do me a favor. Go and sin no more. That's a new life now. I'm getting ready to afford you. And if you want the gift of eternal life, you're going to have to receive change. searching but ain't changing because we got a hybrid salvation that we created based on how we feel but the scripture don't back it up. That's right. That's right. Everything now in this new church is based on how we feel. Right. If we don't feel like coming to church, we don't. If we feel like praying, we pray. But at the same time, if we feel like getting somebody to talk, we just cuss them out. Y'all ain't going to help them. But the Bible said, how in the world can bitter and sweet water flow out the same fountain? Come on, somebody going to have to be renewed in the mind. This thing got us without no conviction. This new church we going to, come on, somebody got us doing crazy stuff. And feel justified for it. And then get up in here and say, bet not nobody judge me. Guess what? If you got this understanding and you just do what you want to do, guess what you done done? You done judge yourself. Y'all don't, don't want to hear this today. The Bible says in the book of Romans, the 12th chapter, it tells us to, to be not conform. What does it mean to conform? To conform means to take on the shape of something. Don't take on the shape of the world. The Bible said in the book of Romans 12, the 12th chapter, that I beseech you therefore, brethren. Come on, somebody, not, not to hear to bash you or anything like that, but what did Paul say? Paul said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the what? By the mercies of God, that you what? You present your bodies a what? Living sacrifice, holy and what? Well, what is acceptable? There's a, there's a standard to this. He said, holy and acceptable, not to you, because what's acceptable to you might not be acceptable to God, but we want to—we don't want to hear that kind of gospel no more. Come on, somebody. He said, "Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable servant, and be not conformed." 
conform to this world, but be ye what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. Guess what we got to do? We got to get back to the original way that God constructed this thing. Because if we're not careful, we're going to be a member of the hybrid church. Y'all don't want y'all don't want this today. But what I'm telling you is this. I'm preaching a message entitled No More Free Meals. This time it's gonna cost you. But well, what is it gonna cost me? What is it gonna cost me? Can I tell you, can I tell you what this what salvation gonna cost you? See, you thought it was free. My God. Yeah, yeah. It was a free gift, but you're going to have to pay. Y'all uh, uh, to keep it. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. That's some things you're going to have to do. Oh, my goodness in here. Ah, Y'all don't want me, but I feel it. I feel like God preaching the truth today. Uh, you need to hear it because uh, if that's not a standard in the church, uh, then we become a church that God ain't pleased with. Uh, if that's not a standard in the church, uh, we become a church, come on, that God did sanction our ordained. Uh, if we don't have a standard in the church anymore, uh, come on, we ain't church. We just a social club with a cross on the door. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. If we don't get our moral compass back right uh, with the things of God uh, then everything that we're doing uh, our coming, singing and shouting uh, will be in vain. Do you understand? Uh, we think salvation uh, just got to do with your eternal life. Uh, no, it's got to do with the life you're living right now too. You only gonna help me up in here. I told you that if any man be in Christ, uh, he's a new creature. All things are uh, uh, passed away and behold, uh, all things uh, got to become new. Uh, come on somebody, lift your hands. Uh, open your mouth and say, Lord God, I thank you for no more free meals. This time, it's got to cost you your attitude. Gonna cost you your opinion. Just because you got an opinion don't mean God sanctioned it. That's just your opinion. What did the word say? Ain't it something how we can preach out the same Bible? Read the same Bible and and, and feel like we ain't got to live nothing. Where you get that from? <laughs> Come on, somebody say amen. amen. All throughout this Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, the moral integrity of the scripture was never broken. No matter the age, the, the dispensation, the day, the time, the moral standard of the word was never broken. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. We ain't here to stay the, after salvation, we ain't here to stay the same. The very next thing you're going to have to do is make some decision. How we get here churching, but we ain't changing. We ain't made no decision. And then if we face with one, guess what? We ain't trying to do that. Why? It costs too much. We become like the people that followed Jesus for the miracles, but then when he told them you got to live right, they left because... They're not in it like that. The Bible said because of the sin that, that we were in, it stunk in the nostrils of God. Sin began to stink in the nostrils of God. That was a day that the Bible said that God repented. He made a man because he looked at the thoughts of man. And the Bible said that the thoughts of man became evil continuously, being inventors of evil things. Working that which is unseemly. So what did he do? He ordered the flood. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. So what did he do? Ordered the flood, but looked at the condition that we were in. And for the atonement of sin, they would get rams and bullocks, but the blood of rams and goats was not enough. He needed a, a, a righteous sacrifice. So what did he do? Jesus paid the ransom for our sin with his own blood. Not so that we continue living the life we was. Think about it. That ain't good arithmetic. Come on, somebody say amen. So at the salvation now, that is a standard of living that we've got to submit to. In order, you don't like this, not 
to continue. Is anybody in here named Chris? Anybody? Chris Kelly. Now, I'm going to talk to Chris. I'm going to talk to Chris, and I'm going to talk to y'all at the same time. He didn't die just so Chris can stay Chris. He died so Chris can be conformed into Christ. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. There's a transformation that got to take place. And guess what? If we don't get the word and receive the word, then guess what we'll never do? We'll just stay Chris, but we won't be Christ. We'll just stay Christina, but won't be Christ. Y'all don't like this up in here. Jesus, or God rather, is not satisfied with Chris alone. Guess what? He ain't just looking for Chris. He's looking for his son. He's looking for somebody uh, that gives a reflection. Uh, come on, somebody uh, of his only begotten son. Uh, the Bible said, for God uh, so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son. Uh, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, uh, but have an everlasting life. God didn't send his son uh, into the world to condemn the world, but to redeem the world. That the world through Christ, uh, come on, sir, come on, might be saved. Uh, Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. And some people trying to figure out what the will of God is for your life. Come on, guess what? Huh? We, if you wanted to just be Chris, huh? if you wanted to just be Christina, maybe Christianity ain't for you. Can I tell you uh, uh, what the will of God is for your life? Good God, is you praying with my mother? Yeah, there's a word in here today. Huh? Romans 8 and 29. Huh? What does it say? We got to change. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. We got to come on, huh? take off the old man huh? and put up on the new huh? if we're going to really be saved. Huh? Can I tell you something? Huh? The Bible said in Romans 8 and 29 huh? for whom huh? he did foreknow. Huh? He foreknow. Huh? He also did predestinate did not stay the same but to be conformed conformed in the what conformed in the who conformed into the image of his son that he might be the first born among many brethren I'm not going to be satisfied come up with you coming in here seeing Cordero Cordero can't save you do you understand I'm not going to be satisfied until you can look at me and see the character of Christ until you can look at me and see my transformation so you can look at me and look at yourself and be able to say since I got in him the things I used to do I don't do no more the places I used to go I don't go no more the way I used to think I don't think no more because I done ate the body I done ate the bread and I done drunk the wine open your mouth and shout Lord whatever you do Deliver the church from another free meal. Deliver us from a Christianity, a hybrid Christianity that do not require change. What is that? All over America. Now, church can be a strange place to go at times because the standard that he created is nowhere around. Where did we get off at? Well, you can, well, you can church on Sundays and be fine and leave out of church not on Monday, that same Sunday, and live something completely different from what you song about and be comfortable in that. This church now, comfortable. And the last thing we want a person to do is disturb or interrupt our comfort zone. Now we got a problem with you. But this the gospel. I didn't make it up. Bible said out the salvation, the grace of God and all of these things that Jesus did to pay the ransom. Come on somebody of the sins of the world. The Bible said shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How can he that's supposed to be dead to sin continue any further? Come on somebody say amen. amen. If we got a salvation that keeps us from changing Trade it in. 
change is a requirement. Peter couldn't stay the same. Look at Paul. Saul was a murderer, but came in contact with Christ. What did he do? He changed. He changed. Come on, somebody say amen. It's a requirement. We in trouble because we making up stuff now and treating it like it's scripture and it's, it's, it's garbage. And the reason why some folks don't see results in their own is the reason why some of us don't see fruit in our life is because we're not connected to the true vine. We're just making it up now as we go. And expect God to stand behind it. The law man might get behind it, but just because he do don't mean God did. That's right, that's right, that's right. <laughs> this it right here. Can I tell you something? Be seated. I'm coming. <laughs> Moses, I'm done, was a man that was referred to as the great deliverer. Moses had an assignment to lead the first mega church from Egypt to Canaan. Two million people that went to his church. Hardly anybody listened. Utter confusion. Moses was a great man. I'm coming home now. But can I tell you something? He is not our example. Moses had some issues too. He was the same guy that killed a man and hid his body in the sand. Moses was a great man, but he's not our example. Can I tell you something? David was the apple of God's eye. But can I tell you something about David? David is not our true example. Y'all don't want y'all don't want to hear me. Y'all want to hear me. You, you would rather for me to take a tune right now and get on out of here. Change is requirement. If you're not willing to do it, you got to check yourself. Eric, you got the, this, this right here. True salvation. The results of true salvation is true transformation. If I refuse to do so, something wrong with what I call salvation. It's tight, but it's... <laughs> it's a quiet church today. That's all right. I told me when to get quiet, that's when the medicine is working. <laughs> David recalls of some of the things he did wasn't even qualified to build God a house. Too much blood on his hands. He, he desired one of his soldiers' wives. Burned in lust, passion, and affection for something that didn't belong to him. And he was the king and still wasn't omitted from the wrath of God. The word didn't change for David neither, even though he was the apple of God's eye. It didn't bend for him. Do you hear me? The Bible said that he sent Uriah. To the front line of the battle, knowing he would die, just so he could keep sleeping with his wife. The moral standard of the Bible never changed, even in the Old Testament. If that was okay, God would have just let it, let it slide. But what happened? 
mess around and let David have a baby with a woman, with a man's woman that didn't belong to him. Killed the child because of David's decisions. Messed that man up. That was, that's, that's what you call a repercussion. Repercussions let you know something wrong. Do you hear me? Though David was a great soldier, a warrior, great king. Can I tell you something about David? He ain't our true example. We ain't got but one example that we should follow after according to the Bible. Guess who that is? That's Jesus. Jesus is our standard. Hi. That's the standard. The standard lets you know whether you're right or wrong, regardless of how you feel. Go find a ruler that ain't off and measure your life by that. You don't see you don't see Jesus running around getting drunk. Well, guess what? If I done accepted him and I'm eating his body, drinking his blood at the salvation, I shouldn't be out there getting drunk neither. Why? My example didn't do that. He didn't do that. That ain't that ain't what he did. You don't see Jesus running around with a wife and a, and a, and a girlfriend too. That ain't what he did. That's the example right there. If you want to know you in line, look at the example. What, what are we doing? Guess what Jesus had as our example? A bride. That's our example. Guess what the bride's name was? The church. That's our example. Come on, somebody say amen. Now, everything else that's going on outside of the example got to be something we created based on how we feel. As long as the preacher was praying, telling folk they're going to get a house, they were saying, thank you. As long as the man of God was passing out hot fish plates. They were saying, thank you. As long as he was prophesying and telling them, I started to say a new car, but you're going to get a new donkey. Y'all ain't going to hear that. Everybody was happy, but when he told them, I'm trying to make it related, but they were cool with that. But the moment he told them they were going to have to change, they didn't want to change. Because change makes you feel uncomfortable. Change will take you from a, a place of immaturity to maturity. Change will make you apologize and they didn't want to. Change will make you realize maybe I was wrong. Change will make you realize God never told me that. <laughs> Get what they wanted. They want the miracle. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't want the Messiah. Because it seemed like that cost too much. Can I tell you something? In this modern day church, that's still a cost. That's a cost. That's a cost. That's a cost that we got to pay. What if I was still a gangster? What if I was still there? What if I was still there? Guess what? So, Y'all would be in trouble. <laughs> say something crazy and let me hear you say it. <laughs> hey. Somebody rang the doorbell. Hey. No matter what time but the day or morning. But guess what? He didn't call me to stay there. At the salvation, guess what? That was salvation that, that, that transformed me into something I said I'd never do. I'm up here doing it. Smiley, they don't want this kind of preaching. We want a, we want a gospel that'll just keep us the same. That ain't what this about. Everybody wants same, same, same. That ain't what he called. He called us to be same. He called us to be peculiar. He called us into a space of holiness. 
He called us into a place of sanctification. Come on, somebody say amen. That's what he called us into. Everything else, we making it up as we go. I know it don't, I know, I know, I know it, I know it don't sound like you think it should sound, but guess what? This is the right song. We got to. It's all throughout the scripture. The more integrity of the scripture it don't change because the way you feel. Come on, somebody say amen. Jeff, you might well play me some soft music if you want to. It right here is a little tough. This is tough. You might have to put some steam on, on that. This, this, this is tough. They followed him. They went to seeking for Jesus, not for salvation. Jesus was wanting to give them salvation. Can I tell you something about what he was telling them? He said, get what you got to do. You got to eat of my body and drink of my blood. What do that mean? That means whatever I am, you got to get that inside of you. Just because you hang around church don't, 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 don't necessarily make you uh, uh, exempt and get you a free ticket in the eternity. You don't think that, do it's a whole lot of folk hang around church. You can do that long as that you live. It might not get no inheritance because you never conformed to the image of his son. You kept your same attitude. You kept your same mentality. You kept the same cuss word. Y'all, you kept the same mentality, the same old everything. Come on, somebody. He didn't call us to be the same. He called us to be changed. Jesus is our true example that we shall follow after. Lord, whatever you do, give me to be in alignment to what you wrote. Don't give us to be a fruitless generation. Give us to be a people that bear fruit. And we got to show up, pray now because the spirit of strong delusion is in this world today. Can I tell you something? Some people do stuff and they feel justified what they do because somewhere in their mind they feel like it seemed right. But there's a Bible, that, there's a scripture in the Bible said uh, 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 about these things that seem right. Come on, somebody say amen. What did he say? He said, there is a way that seem it right to a man. That, but the destination in their end thereof is that of hell, death, and destruction. And you're trying to figure out how did I get here because you, because you were guided by what seemed right. There is a righteousness that God ain't got nothing to do with. Can I tell you what kind of righteousness God ain't got nothing to do with? The one that starts with you, that you created, the one that you put together. The one that you make shift manufacture. Can I tell you what it's called? It's called self-righteous. That's a righteousness that's of self, but that's a righteousness of, of, of God. But what is the righteousness of self? The righteousness of self will tell you, if a joker uh, do you wrong, do them wrong twice. That's self-righteous. Self-righteous makes you feel like you got a right to hate a joker. You right. But that righteousness that you got came from self. But what did God's righteousness tell you to do? God's righteousness said you got to change. He said you got to love those that despitefully use you and do good to those that, that wish all manner of evil upon you. That's the righteousness of God. The righteousness of self will have you walking around like Saul, feeling justified because you the man. Come on, somebody say amen. What kind of righteousness Saul had? Saul act like he could do whatever he wanted to do. So guess what? Whenever God told Saul to do something, Saul disobeyed God and still stood in righteousness. But it was the righteousness of self. But when you got the righteousness of God, and David messed up too in the seat of the king. What was the difference between uh, uh, David's righteousness and Saul's righteousness? Whenever God come on somebody, approached Saul with what he did, Saul lied, but David cried. 
and said, Against thee only have I sinned and committed this evil in thy sight. Blot out my transgressions. Yeah, come on somebody. Lord, whatever you do, come on somebody. Created me a clean heart and renew within me the right spirit. God, I don't want to hold no more. Don't want to drink. Don't want to smoke no more. God, whatever's in my life, that's the righteousness of God. Whatever's in my life that should not be, shine the light down from heaven and strengthen me. I want to be holy. I want to be saved. I want to be righteous, but the righteousness that I want, I don't want the righteousness of myself. God, do something in me. God, don't let me continue in wrongdoing. Continue in hating somebody. Continue. Come on, right here in the church of killing my neighbor with my tongue, killing my neighbor with my mouth. Someone sees a discord right in the house of God and don't even feel no type of way. That destroyed families, that separated churches, that divided the membership and coming in still feel as if you ain't done nothing wrong and if somebody corrects you you don't take the correction but you find 20,000 reasons why you right God get the spirit out of the church seven things six things that the Lord hate and seven is an abomination and that is that of a proud look God get the spirit of pride out of it Lord God if I'm wrong let me say I'm wrong so I can get it right God save this church from a parallel come on somebody religion save this church from a high bread salvation God give me to receive change in my heart give me to receive change in my mind give me to receive change in my spirit God give it to us guess what I'm the preacher but guess what I got to do? I got to commit my ways unto the Lord. This word that I'm preaching is a double-edged sword. Every time it cuts you, it cut me too. Guess what? I'm not exempt from the righteousness of God. I got to line up to you. Don't you know that I got to apologize? I apologized the other day. Come on, somebody. I'm saying, Lord, don't let me stay the same. Don't let me just be known as Cordero. What if Cordero don't got no inhabitants? You know who we are? We are the body of Christ. You ain't the body of Daniel. You ain't the body of Adams. You ain't the body of Bonino. We the body of Christ. If we the body, we got to be willing to change our name. Cause y'all ain't gonna help them whatever Christ look like. That's what I resemble. Whatever Christ would do, that's what I want to do. Whatever Christ would say, that's what I want to say. Save me, Lord God, from the crown of my head, from the Souls of my feet. Don't give me a man-made salvation. God, give me your spirit. Give us your spirit, Jesus. God, give us your spirit. God, I don't want a way that seemed right to man, but the end thereof is hell, death, and destruction. If I'm wrong, I'm willing to be corrected. Correct me, Jesus. The Bible says that God chases those that he loves. God, correct me. Correct me when I'm wrong. Send me a word that'll put me on the right track. Send Send me a word that'll put me on my knees. Send me a word that'll say I'm sorry. Send me a word that'll make me love my enemy. Send me a word that'll change my heart. Send me a word that'll purify my spirit. Send me a word that'll purify my soul. Send me a word that'll make me fall down on this altar. Send me a word that'll make me want to change. Make me want to pray. Make me want to fast. No more free meals. Lord, touch us. Leave my Catania. Lebreski Kapa. Likatana no moho. Let it take it to me. Sikataya. Lebreska Kapaho. Let it take it to Lord, send us a word. That's a cause. 
There's a cause. There's a cause. There's a cause involved. There's a cause involved. There's a cause involved. There's a cause involved. Don't let me die full of bitterness. Don't let me die full of most full of lust. Then a dog got fleas. Don't let me die in my sin. Don't let me die in a dose of fornication. In a lying tongue. But let me live according to your standard of life. Lord, send it with us. Lord, send a revival and let it begin with me. Send a revival, Jesus. Send a revival, Jesus. Send a revival, Jesus. Touch my heart. Touch my soul. Send a revival, Jesus. Lord, don't let me die in the church. Come on, somebody on the praise stand. In the musician box. On the front row. On the deacon section. In the section where the preachers sit. God, take my soul and wash it. Take my soul and cleanse it. Take my heart, Lord God, and redeem me from the hands of death. Lord, I thank you that new life begins with me. Lord, I thank you that new life is living in me. Lord, touch us today. Lord, don't let me be the same. God, let me be changed, Jesus. God, give us our conscious behavior. Give us our, back our conscious mind. God, we can see it and don't think that matters. We can lie still and cheat and don't think that matters. We can do all of these things and don't even realize that if we become like that, we one step away from a reprobated man having our conscience seared with a hot iron. Change us, oh God. Change us. God, I submit to your authority. I'm the preacher, but you got permission to change me, Jesus. I ain't satisfied with the skin that I'm living in. I'm not going to be satisfied, Lord God. Until you give me a new body, I'm not gonna be satisfied, Lord. Until you give me a new mind, I'm not gonna be satisfied. Until I can walk different, I'm not gonna be satisfied. Until I can talk different, I'm not gonna be satisfied. Until I can live right, I'm not gonna be satisfied. Until I can give right, I'm saying I'm a mess, Lord. I'm saying all of my righteousness is as of the filthy rags. Change Cordero the real being, touch Cordero the real being. Change his heart. Change his mind. Change him, Lord. From the inside out. Change some of these men. Change some of these women. God don't give us a salvation that won't let us change, but we receive you now. Change me. Change us. God don't let us get comfortable get satisfied for the ways of sin is still death but the gift of God is eternal life give us the very spirit of John and the book of revelations that told them that read it that there shall come a time in your life but you got to eat the little black book. What does that mean? You got to eat the word. Guess what? Changes in the word. Transformation is in the word. The Bible says that the word is like full of soap. If you get full of that word, that word gonna cleanse you. If you get full of that word, that word gonna change you. If you get full of that word, that word gonna make you love. It's gonna make you forgive. Give us to be able to eat the little black book. That's a cause. Lord, will you deliver us from a kind of Christianity that don't cost nothing. Deliver us today 
from a costless Christianity. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you, Lady Hill, what your new life in Christ is going to cost you? Can I tell you? Amber, can I tell you what your new life is going to cost you? Can I tell you? Brown Cooley, can I tell you what your new life is going to cost you? You're old. receive it. Give, give us to accept it. In Jesus' name. Right now, I need everybody standing on your feet. Decision. Come on, somebody. Means to decide. That's a word, side. C I D E. It, it comes from the word incision, a decision. Can I tell you something? It means to cut off. Y'all ain't gonna help me. And when I decide to do something, it ain't like an opinion. When I make a decision, I cut myself off from any other option. Right now, at the altars of our hearts. Somebody for the first time in your life is getting ready to make a decision that I decided to follow Jesus. Every eye closed. You are at your altar. You're at the altar today. You're at the altar today. This is an altar call. There is no such thing as an offering without a sacrifice. Whenever we went to the place of the altar, something had to die. And come on, somebody, the dead thing had to be offered to God. Guess what? We're at the altar today. And guess what you get ready to do? You get ready to decide in your decision. You get ready to make an offering. It's offering time. Keep your money. It's offering time. I'm not talking about tears, fitness, toys. It's offering time. What are you willing to lose to gain? Come on, at the offering, at the altar, within your spirit, somebody, the Holy Ghost, is giving you confidence to decide. 
no matter what the decision, the decision, decision means to cut off. No matter what side means to cut off. No matter what I've got to cut off. God, give me confidence today that I'm deciding. At 423 Sunday, May the 5th, may this be a memorial for somebody. that had a watered-down salvation and a hybrid religion to say, Lord, I'm deciding to choose the right moral decision. Deliver me from my soulless, sensual opinion. Give me your word. Somebody's decided, even now, leave my sikata behind. Leave Blanda Lola Moho sikata behind. Somebody's deciding, even now. There's a decision here. Somebody's deciding. Somebody is saying, somebody sing a new song. You got heaven's permission in this moment to sing a new song. You got heaven's permission in this moment to sing a song of freedom. You got heaven's permission in this moment to sing a new song. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow him. No turning back. No turning back. The world is behind me in the cross uh, is before I have decided yes Lord if you're an individual that not have chose made a choice and given an option but if you decided come on clap your hands all over this building if you have decided if you've decided Come on, lift your decision up. Lift that decision up. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something about your decision while you're lifting it up? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are becoming new. Can I tell you something with your decision? Though you made your decision today, guess what? We are still learning and growing in grace. Can I tell you something about the righteous? The Bible said even the righteous fall seven times. But the blessed part of the righteous is that guess what? I'm not going to sit down in my failures. Come on, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue on to Christ. If you got a continuation in your mind, you might stumble, but I'm getting back up because I decided. Come on, somebody. Come on. I may got some connection that I got to get rid of to help me decide. But if, if that's the case, then so be it. It's a church in here that still got it up in your mind that in 2024, I'm doing it God's way. In 2024, I'm still going to lift up the word of God. In 2024, with the hybrid church uh, taking over. I'm still going to be one of the ones uh, that lifted up the blood shame now. I wish I had uh, somebody in this church uh, to open your mouth uh, and say, Lord, I thank you for the Holy Ghost uh, that's helping me uh, to decide. Uh, somebody here, uh, open up your mouth uh, and let the devil know uh, that I've decided, uh, I've decided, uh, I've decided, uh, I've decided. I don't care if you're the recent preacher or teacher. You can, I'm decided. Come on, some of you that's got to ought with your husband. You got to ought with your wife. You got to decide. I have decided. That you're coming out of obscurity, my God. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel.
feel uh, the Holy Ghost. Uh, somebody made a declaration uh, before I got up here uh, that they put it in the atmosphere uh, that deliverance uh, is in this house today. Uh, somebody before I got to my house uh, made a confession uh, and made a declaration uh, that somebody uh, is going to be delivered. Uh, I come to somebody know uh, that the declaration uh, was not wrong. Uh, I need somebody uh, that had decided uh, to touch somebody uh, around them uh, and said, neighbor, 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 uh, neighbor, 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 uh, I have decided uh, that my walk is going to change. Uh, I have decided uh, that my language is changing. Uh, I have decided uh, that I'm walking with Jesus. Uh, I have decided uh, that I'm not going to struggle with it no more. Uh, I have decided uh, that I'm following him. Uh, I have made uh, a decision uh, that bitterness uh, won't get the best of me. Uh, I have decided uh, that come hell, come high water, uh, trouble on every side. Uh, I still uh, got joy. Uh, somebody in here uh, or oh, the letter never know uh, that I'm delivered uh, from the spirit uh, of familiarity. Uh, I'm delivered uh, from the spirit uh, of temptation and lust. Uh, I'm delivered uh, from every spirit of perversion. Uh, the devil won't have my life. Uh, the devil can't have my destiny. He can't have my children. Uh, can't have my anointing. Uh, can't have my husband. Uh, can't have my wife. Uh, it's now. It's now. Uh, is there anybody uh, that's making that decision uh, that I can't go back now, uh, can't give up now? Uh, somebody asked me why uh, the world is behind me and the cross uh, is before. Uh, get out of your seat. Uh, run to five people uh, and say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. Uh, I, uh, I have, uh, I have, uh, I have uh, decided, uh, I have uh, decided, uh, I have. Come on, somebody. Put your declaration in this atmosphere. I decree and I declare when I walk out of here, I'm walking out different. I decree and I declare when I walk out of here, I'm walking out free. I decree and I declare when I walk out of here, I'm walking out whole. I decree and I declare that after the message, I've got a new lease on life. I decree and I declare that every day of my life, my new praise is going to step on the devil's head. Open your mouth and shout out to hell here and let the devil know I've decided. I have decided. I have decided. I have decided. That I might have to lose some people. But so be it. That I may have to end some relationship. So be it. Come on, somebody. Huh? That's a place that I used to go. I might can't go no more. Huh? But so be it. Huh? If they ask you why, you won't go. Huh? If they ask you why, you can't come. Huh? If they ask you what's wrong with them, then you ain't got to give them huh? no long explanation. Just look them in the face huh? and tell them I'm decided. Decided. The one away, I'm decided. No matter what it costs me, I'm decided. Come on, put your hands on it. When you clap your hands, the clapping of your hands is the sign of victory. 
when the warriors would go to, to battle. Uh, if they had confidence uh, and they knew that God was on their side, they would clap their hands uh, and advance and let the devil know that I'm coming out on victory side. Uh, I'm coming out to win. Uh, I'm coming out to head uh, and not to tail. Uh, above and not beneath. Uh, come on, the lender uh, and not the power. Uh, the head uh, and not the tail. Uh, somebody uh, give me the moment of life uh, to really be saved, uh, to really be delivered. Uh, to really be free, open your mouth and show glory. This is a victorious church. I feel the power of the Holy Ghost in here. I feel the power of freedom in this place. I feel the anointing of salvation in this place. Come on, thank God that you made it. Some of you been sleeping with the enemy for too long. The buck stops now. Somebody's making it up in their mind that no longer will I sing high song and go home and sleep with the enemy. No longer shall I praise high crowds and leave out of here and sleep with the enemy. No longer shall I give him praise and leave out of here and fornicate with the enemy. I've decided. I'm making the decision to delete the number. I'm making the decision to delete the contact. I'm making the decision to light fire to the love letter. I'm making a decision that I'm come on somebody. I'm can become a loser from every soul tie. Come on somebody that I created in my soul is real. Somebody ought to get your silver and cut the tie. Cut the tie. Cut the tie. Break to you because you decided. cut you than for God to cut me. I've decided. I would rather erase your contact. Come on somebody from my black book than for him to erase my name out the Lamb's book. I've decided. Do it cost more than your inheritance? Do it cost more than is it worth more than your eternal life? Is it worth more than your, dis your salvation? I'm decided. Spiritually. Spiritually. Somebody in this church is willing to write the check. I don't care how much it costs. I'm paying it today. Come on, sign it, sign it, sign it. Uh, 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 uh. Sign it, come on. I know it's a high price, but I'm willing to pay it. Y'all ain't gonna hit me. I know it's a high cost, but I'm willing to pay it. Come on, somebody, I know I might have to cut some off, but I'm willing to pay it. I know I may have to take a few cold showers, but I'm willing to pay it. I know I may have to run away, but I'm willing to run. I may have to pack my bags, but I'm willing to go. I'm like David, Lord, one thing. Have I desire and that that I may seek it, uh, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to inquire and his temper. I'm decided. I might have to crucify this flesh, but that's all right because I. Come on, put your hands together. Oh. Oh. I feel God in here. I feel God. 
God real big. I feel God in here. I feel victory in here. Bigger than that, super big. One more time. I feel God. Somebody about to shout. Somebody about to dance. Somebody about to let the devil know that you thought you had me. But I'm free now, real big. Hit me. If you got to leap, leap out of it. Y'all ain't going to help me. The reason why I'm leaping out, because it's leap year. It's leap season. I'm leaping out of lust. I'm leaping out of fortitude. I'm leaping out of bad decisions. If you got to run, run. If you got to jump, jump. If you got to shout, shout. But somebody, oh, you better give him praise. Sister Levi, I dare you to do a victory lap. I dare you to do a victory lap. I know. Oh, she about to run for you. Somebody get back to be free. Somebody get back to be delivered. Somebody get back to step on the devil. You better one, two, one, two. Y'all better. Come on, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Come on, you coming out? You coming out? You coming out? And I'm coming out with you. You coming out? And we coming out with you. Brother LD, I dare you to get in the house and give them praise uh, for somebody that is uh, Y'all better help them out. Uh, Lady J, I dare you to give them praise. Uh, I dare you to give them praise. Uh, Mama, I dare you to give them praise. Come on, because somebody have the sign. Come on, give him praise. Come on, lift him up. Your hand, his hand, shall bruise your heel. Your heel shall bruise his hand. Come on, somebody, pick him up. Put him down. Let the devil know that I ain't stopped dancing. I just decided to hold hands with a better partner because I You better be careful, Sister Mavis. You better be careful, Keisha Brown Cooley. Your decision, huh? come on, somebody, huh? is so contagious huh? that he gonna work it out. Huh? Come on, somebody, out for your brother on your brother's behalf. Huh? Your decision huh? is saving your brother. Your decision huh? is saving his life. Your decision huh? is touching your family. Your decision huh? is causing household salvation huh? to live. In your house. You better watch it to be a spill. Your decision. Somebody, anybody, open your mouth and shout if you're free. Shout if you delivered. Shout if you made home. Shout if you love it. Shout if you decide. I got some stuff that ain't, ain't riding in my car. Ain't living in my house. I got some stuff that I got to get rid of because after the day, I decided to open your mouth and give God praise all over this building. All over this building. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Get the offering bucket. We get ready to give in this atmosphere. I have decided. My God, what are y'all doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? 
What are you doing? God told me to tell you, man, that you ain't come here for nothing. You came for something. That's a decision that God's going to give you to make while you're holding my hand. God told me to tell you, you're different. You ain't like them. That's a call of God that's on your life. If a devil would have had his way, he'd have you locked up behind prison bars.